An octave is a doubled frequency. A scale's tonic note is always half of its resolving doubled frequency. Or put another way, the octave note's frequency is always twice the value of its tonic note. All octaves are based on the doubling power of two. The power of two drives energy in the material world. And our physical bodies have a tangible reaction to the octave. Rather than just hearing the octave, our ears actually perceive the relationship inherent in the octave. According to Chaz Stoddard, the octave has its own receptor in the human body. He writes, quote, if we take a bilateral cross-section through the cochlea, it reveals a spiral shape. Neuropathology of the ear shows that octaves are decoded at the same point in each layer of the spiral. Some experts maintain that if the cochlea was a straight cone, rather than a tightly wound spiral, we would have no perception of the octave at all. All we would hear would be a series of successively rising tones. Between octave notes, we house our musical scales, and in this video, we'll discuss two different ways octaves can be organized. The harmonic series produces a natural harmonic octave using one set of rules. Modern tempered music builds an octave using another set of rules. Here we see the first five harmonic octaves off the tonic of one hertz. Each octave is twice as long as the one before. We can think of harmonic octaves as being self-contained. In the harmonic series, you enter an octave and stay in that realm, that womb, to experience its particular frequency relationships until you leave it and enter a different one. Here, the octave between harmonics 16 and 32 has a rule. Every note is one hertz apart. That rule doesn't change until you enter the next octave up, between harmonics 32 and 64. In this octave, the new rule is that every note is two hertz apart. Even using a tempered frequency, like middle C at 261.63 hertz, we see that a consistent harmonic rule is established. In this case, every note in this octave is 16.35 Hz apart. But in making the jump from the lower octave to the higher one, we experience quite a jump in size from the last interval of the lower octave and the first interval of the next. This rigid harmonic rule causes a problem for musicians because it doesn't allow for modulation or changing keys. Each time you leave one octave to enter another, the rules change. The octaves of the key of C don't properly correspond with those of, for example, the key of G when they overlap. If I want to change keys from C to G, the G octave now contains two sets of rules, the 1 Hz interval from the low C octave and the 2 Hz rule from the next C octave. It's necessary to completely retune to the key of G to discover the harmonic rule for this G octave, which happens to be that each note is separated by 1.5 Hz. This causes many note frequencies to change from what they were in the key of C. For example, the note of C itself moves from 32 Hz to 31.5. Here, I've overlaid the retuned G octave in light blue to show how the notes are adjusted away from the original rules of the previous two C octaves to follow the rules of this G octave. These self-contained octaves produce positive and healing intervals, and tune notes to some of the alternative frequencies that get a lot of press, like 432. But because of these conflicting self-contained octaves inherent in the harmonic series, 
musicians have come up with ways to temper these intervals so that changing keys becomes possible. In modern music today, we've settled on a process called equal temperament. Tempered octaves are not self-contained. They're intended to blend together, so there's no sense that you're leaving one octave and entering a new one. In equal temperament tuning, the intervals increase gradually with no regard to which octave you're in. The rise occurs at a steady rate. We can see that here as well in the way each tempered interval increases slightly over the course of the octave. This is practicality in music because tempered octaves are practical. But many musicians and composers complain that tempered music, while workable and convenient, doesn't produce the beauty or the other benefits of harmonic intervals. In a future video, I'll show how a third form of tuning, the Pythagorean process of stacking fifths, compares with both harmonic tuning and temperament. I'm grateful for any feedback. Please leave your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching.